All right, so on this one, now it's time to actually make a post create serializer as well as a post create view. Now making multiple serializers is not necessary. You don't actually have to go that route. Uh, the reason we're doing it is to show you different methods on what you actually can do, um, not necessarily what you absolutely have to do. Um, but the can do part is really kind of important to just structure in your data and making it simple and clean. Um, so one of the things that you may have noticed is the slug field being involved um, with the post list serializer as well as the post detail serializer and also when we created this data. So what I want to do now is create a new one called post create serializer and I'm going to reorganize these here a little bit um, for um, alphabetical and we're going to do post create serializer and I'm going to get rid of the slug. I'm also going to really get rid of the ID and with this one we are going to import it into our views. So in here we're going to import post create serializer um, and I'm going to put this into a tuple just so it's a little bit cleaner and definitely easier to read. All right so now we're going to make a post create view, post create API view and it's going to inherit from the API view, create API view and we want to actually import this as well. And if we weren't sure about what it was actually called, of course, we'd go to the Django REST framework for the generic views, and we see it's called create API view. Um, all right, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and change our serializer function in the post create view. And I no longer need a lookup field there. Now let's get this post create, and we're gonna go into URLs, import the post create view, and finally put it into this URL of create, and dot as view name, equals to create, there we go. And we're gonna go back into our URLs, refresh. Ah, let's make sure the server's running. And create. And now what we see here is title content publish. Um, so if we selected a date, let's go ahead and just select a random date and new title and new item, hit post new title, new item, so on and so forth. No errors came up, right? No validation errors, no server errors, nothing like that. Created, it was all good. Go back into post list, and what we see here is we've got that slug. Um, so this actually allowed us to create the slug based off of the post save function that we created a while ago, right? So create slug, excuse me, pre-save function, and we actually created the slug before it was saved. So, the Django REST framework definitely still works with everything that's going on with Django, and that's a really good example of something like that, and a really good example of so why we would use a different serializer for our create function. Now, this also should be true for create and update. So the serializer should be really the create update serializer, and we go back into our views, and we're gonna change it to the create update serializer, and then post update, we also wanna do that as well. Um, so when we go to actually update a serializer, oh, it's not letting us import it. Let's make sure everything's saved. Um, when we actually go to update something, so let's go into new title and go to edit, we are no longer able to change the slug field. So I'll say hi there, new content, um, and then of course the publish stuff, hit put, and it will change that last one. So hi there, new content, we go back to list API, hi there, new content, right? So it's it's still updating, but it's not allowing us to change the slug, which I think is rather important um, for when we're working with create or update. In this case, in some cases, you might wanna have the ability to change the slug, but for us, we don't want that ability for so many reasons um, that we talked about definitely when we were creating the blog itself, but each blog for slugs, we want them to be unique and we want them to be based off of the title. So even if it's the original title and you change the title or whatever, the slug is not gonna change, which I think is really important. Okay, so um, that is it for the create and update view. Notice the create view was very, very simple. Um, it didn't do everything that we would need it to do, right? So we've seen this in our view on update. It said we have a permission thing here, right? So that's a permission that we st definitely still need to do. Um, and the update view doesn't have anything to do about the request user as the post itself, but the create view, if we go back in there, we see that instance.user equals to request.user. So that means that once it's saved, 
that it is the requested user. So this means that we're gonna to have to deal with some permissions as well as some validation and additional things that we'll need to do in the future. Um, so it's just something to think about when we're transitioning from our regular view into our actual um, API view. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.